Sixers win it! Wow! Oh man, him being just posterized, Russell Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles! Let me get a hell yeah! What's going on, guys? What's happening? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. POB can be found on iTunes and Spotify. You guys are watching us here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, joining us today is the Austin Krell. Follow him on Twitter at KrellTPL and the awesome Sixers NBA podcast, The Feed to Embiid. Check that out at The Feed to Embiid on Twitter. What's going on, man? If you have, if you have a horse... And you have a shark, and you have a human, all in the same room together. How many feet do you have in the room? Shark, a human, and a what? Six, fourteen. A horse. <laughs> a horse. horse. Six. No. Are you talking? What? <laughs> he what? <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> well, first of all, ho- horses don't have feet; they have hooves. Uh, Sharks have fins, so there's only two feet in the room. I win. <laughs> Bro, I did again. All right. Also joining us today is Tiago. Follow him on Twitter at tscabia. What's going on, dude? I don't even know how to follow that man. I, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Take my head off to you, Austin. Congratulations, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Good. Excited. Excited. Talk about my guy here, Tyshawn Alexander. One of my favorite guys for sure. Awesome. Today we are talking Tyshawn Alexander. We're talking about his strengths. We're talking about his weaknesses. We're going to review his college career and we're going to talk about the best fits in the NBA draft. My man Tiago wrote an awesome article on Tyshawn Alexander. Check that out at thepaintedlines.com. Go ahead, Tiago. Tell us a little bit about Tyshawn Alexander's college career. Yeah, man. Tyshawn Alexander, interesting guy. Uh, First of all, for you guys who don't know his background, um, came out of Oak Hill Academy. I went 45 and won his uh, senior year. So a big time winner at the high school level. Now, uh, if Oak Hill Academy may sound familiar to some of you guys, that's because uh, Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony both came out of that that high school as well as as other prospects as well. So the guy has, has a pedigree that's above and beyond most most uh, college players. Now, when he he obviously didn't get recruited as much as uh, Kevin and, and Melo, but settled on an interesting program at Creighton. And uh, the reason why I say that is because Greg Thurman is the coach there. And uh, he runs a very uh, NBA modern style offense. So from the get-go, Tyshawn really got a chance to experience and sample what it's like to run a more modern, high-tempo, uh, up and down offense and not so much a static into the post back out uh team so for i think for tyshawn the growth that he experienced again from freshman year up to uh his his junior year has been so much a function of that as well the coaching that he got at at creighton um and it was interesting to see that that growth develop um he started mostly as a uh on ball point guard his freshman season and uh it wasn't good to be honest turnovers were high play (laughs) making low shooting was uh, was no good and i think uh <laughs> greg 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 McDermott realized that and kind of got him more a little bit off ball so yeah. if you watch him at his senior at his junior season at creighton he he works primarily more as a uh, wing off ball wing and i think that's kind of what his game projects at the next level now that's not to say that he can't make plays on the ball he does have a decent handle and he can take guys off the dribble but i think his game really skyrocketed once he made that transition to the wing and the numbers show that. I mean, he's shooting from 53% up to 59%. So I think the complete picture on on, on Tyshawn here is a guy who who comes in more pro-ready than, than most prospects and a guy who probably can fit multiple needs to, on, your, on your team as well. So, yeah, I'm excited for Tyshawn. He's one of my guys. Really intriguing guy. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his strengths. When I first think of – Tyshawn Alexander, I think of of a really good scorer. Like this is one of the best scorers in the country. He consistently can score on all three levels. He's deadly from beyond the arc. Uh, He's great at the line. He's standing at six foot four. So he looks like a shooting guard to me uh, at the next level, um, especially off ball. I like that. Um, But yeah, he's got something that not a lot of prospects have. And that is the ability to create his own shot. 
Um, he can make shots in a variety of ways. Uh, he can play the pick and pop. He can thrive in the spot up three. Uh, so I think this is a really intriguing offensive prospect. What about you, Austin? Yeah, I think every year there's like a guy who, for whatever reason, falls like vastly underrated um, in terms of like college recruiting and like all the attention. Like Tyshawn only had offers, I think, from Charlotte, um, Creighton, and what was the other one? Um, Clemson and Virginia Tech. So, you know, I, I think he has a chance to be like one of those guys who, um, you know, ends up shooting up the board and you're like, well, why, you know, like he's at Creighton. Why is he at Creighton? Like there, he, there are better programs out there that could have taken him. So I think he, he definitely is an interesting prospect for sure. Um, I, I think for me, um, he checks a lot of boxes. The shooting obviously is, 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 is big 39% uh, this season. And I think the confidence as a shooter is also something you want to see. So many guys that are good shooters in college aren't confident in their shot in the NBA. And it ends up like it just like doesn't pan out. Like you, you have to come to the NBA and be a confident shooter. You can't be like questioning yourself and then you never, because then you just never get off the ground. Um, so I think he, I, I like his confidence and I think he's a prolific shooter. I think he has good shooting guard uh, size. Go ahead, Tiago. Yeah, so on that shooting uh, point that Austin brought up, 38% on 400 coll collegiate attempts, um, that's pretty substantial. That that tells me that's sustainable in the uh, in the next level. And 84th percentile in the pull-up, uh, spot-up shooting. So there's an element there of a, a shot of, a, of a guy who can really extend your offense from multiple parts of, of the court. Now, when you look at it, when you break down his shooting, uh, what really stands out, he's a, he's a long athlete, he's a long combo guard. So he can shoot over guys very easily. I mean, I've seen him get defended by guys 6'7 and 6'8 and calmly pull up with no no hesitation with you know room to spare. So I think the shooting combination with the wingspan is something that really intrigues me for, for the pro-level prospect. Uh, but I'm going to go to the other end of the court and defensively is where he really, really stands out as a, okay. I think an elite point of attack defender. And he's made guys lives absolutely a nightmare in the big East. We talked about Sadiq Bay made his life. Hell miles Powell, who's another superb shooter. When, uh, what did he go? Let me just take, take a look here. He went nine for 29. So, uh, it's, it's tough playing against him. I mean, he's a guy who's going to fight through his team. He's gonna Is that one through. game? Two games. Oh, against him. Like, yeah. God damn. Like, what, like, like, when were you going to realize he should have stopped shooting for the night? <laughs> I was just looking to shoot. <laughs> he does not care. Perpetual so, green light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, he's a guy who's going to fight through screens, going to fight through, you know, traffic and really make your life fail. So, I, I love the, the, the athletic profile. I love the, the defensive profile and, and the shooting. Wow, you sound really high on this guy. All right, let's move to weaknesses. Uh, first thought, Tyshawn Alexander. I'm going to his efficiency. And Thiago, maybe you want to call me out on that one. But uh, when, I, when I look at uh, Tyshawn Alexander, uh, dude, this guy got buckets, but it took him a lot of shots to get those buckets. And that's where I go. You know, what is he at the next level? He's, he's not going to be able to do that in the NBA. Do you have any response to that, Thiago? I think you, you you touched on it. You can get a little bit uh, wild. I think that Greg has done a better job of harnessing that energy. And to your point, uh, yeah, it, it gets it gets a little bit crazy, but is he's actually swung more the other way his junior year. So he's become what I consider to be a little bit too passive on the offensive end. There are games where he he goes off early and then just backs off and lets his teammates take over. And, and Creighton had a pretty good team, so there, there's a reason why he did that. But I would like to see a guy who's a little more assertive on, on the basketball court, especially when he's going. So there are games where he's going that it really benefits him and the team for him to, to take more of an offensive role. But I, I think he, he touched on that. The efficiency is something that, that can get a little bit out of hand sometimes. How about you, Austin? Any uh, weaknesses for Tysha? Got to take more than six shots to get 60 points, right, Dabs? <laughs> Um, I would say that his ability to, um, handle the ball under like NBA pressure is probably a concern for me. 
Um, I think he can handle well, like five in spaces. I think once you actually exert some resistance on him, that's when he might get a little bit sh shaky. Just developing that handle, and then with developed hand handle, you you would you're going to end up becoming a better shot creator for yourself. Um, but that would be my my major um, you know standout point for him. Um, my notes, I. I would also say, like, given his size, five rebounds a game at Creighton probably isn't enough. Uh, I'd like to see him sort of exert that that that, that body that he has, uh, his strong frame, and maybe more of a factor on the glass. Because I mean, if you, if if you if you can rebound at the NBA level um, as a, as a shooting guard and you can you know defend, you're going to be on the court whether whether your offense is is, is stinky or not at the moment. Uh, go ahead, Tiago. Any weaknesses before we move on to best fits? Yeah, he need to exactly what Austin was saying. He needs to more of an impact. Uh, he's a great defender, great player of attack defender, but that needs to translate in steals, deflections, and he's a, again, he's a long athlete, so the numbers don't necessarily match uh, the impact that he can make on the defensive end. So I'd like to see a little more involved, playing passing lanes, you know, getting under guys. Uh, chin and making sure that he gets more turnovers so I, I would call that out as well as another another weakness in his game awesome so let's move on to best fits i'll lead off i got the oklahoma city thunder so i see type oh that's a good one i like that one yeah all right cool all right so yeah okc needs wing scoring they currently have the 51st pick i see this guy as a second round pick uh chris paul he's turning 35 dennis schroeder he's unsigned after next season uh if they continue with those like three guard lineups um, knowing, you know, the offensive firepower that Tyshawn Alexander could develop into, I think that's a really good fit. What about you, Tiago? Yeah, I mean, we're, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but my fit is actually the hometown team, the Philadelphia Sixers. And uh, the reason why I say that is uh, my comp to him in Austin does not like them. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> the reason why I Wait, say that – Oh, 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 our hometown team. I thought it was like, oh, I'm like, he's, I'm like, he's from Charlotte, North Carolina. What? <laughs> uh, the reason why I say that is my comp to him is a little bit like a guy in Jason Richardson. Now, Richardson projects a little bit more towards the three, two, three. Uh, Tyshawn is more of a one, two. But the playing style is very much similar. And Tyshawn. I mean, sorry, Jace, uh, Josh Richardson has a 11 million player option and then he becomes a restricted free agent. So at what point do the Sixers decide, is this guy really worth his next contract? And what point do we want to move on from Josh Richardson? Now, he will have some trade value, I believe, on the market. And that's one of the few guys the Sixers have that can really provide them some value to be able to get out of certain contracts and make different moves within the roster. So to me, Tyshawn can be a guy who can slot in, maybe doesn't not ready to play right away, but if you look at the career arc that Josh took in, in Miami, I see perhaps a similar career arc for jo uh, for uh, Tyshawn. And I think it's worth the game. A second-round pick, uh, yeah. why not? The NBA-ready player can really step in and maybe give you some offense right away. So, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Possible fit there. Cool, man. Uh, go ahead. Austin, any reaction to that? And do you have another best fit? <sighs> it's an interesting one, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it's my guy. I, I, I would say I like the idea of the Raptors at the 28 um, for Tyshawn Alexander. I think Fred Van Vliet is priced himself out of out of that market as a because you know, they're going to want him as a backup. Um, I think he'll be, I think he'll get starters money on you know a team that isn't quite sure what it's doing. Um, and no, no knock against Fred Van Vliet, but I mean it's Fred Van Vliet. Um, I I like the idea of Toronto. He'll he'll be cheap coming in um he's a shot maker he's very he, he's quick he i like his first step and I, I i do think that he would be a really i think learning under kyle lowry would be a, a very good um opportunity for him i also think that toronto likes to switch their lineup up a ton they like to have you know serge baka playing the playing the five um pascal siakam playing the four you could slot um tyshawn at the one or even the two and then have a guy like um, um, Terrence Davis or whatever, or the, you know, the rookie. Um, I, you could have him playing the three, and that would be an interesting scenario. Um, I just think that there's like a lot of a, a, a lot of good things about that fit there. And plus, Toronto's cold as shit. Creighton, Creighton, uh, or Bra Nebraska's cold as shit. 
I think I think it's a good fit. It's a fit made in heaven for sure. <laughs> All right, I love how we're bringing weather into the scouting report. And that is as painted lines as it gets right there. All right, so let's. Um, all right, I'm going to throw out the Spurs. The San Antonio Spurs, man, they need a scoring playmaker. Uh, they, they have DeJounte Murray. They have Derek White, Lonnie Walker. These guys aren't great perimeter scores. Lonnie Walker certainly has potential down the road. Um, but the Spurs have the 41st pick in the second round. Is that too high to take Tayshawn? Uh, I'm a little lower on this guy than you guys. I see this guy as a G-leaguer. I'm sorry, I do. Uh, at least starting out. Um, but I Wow. Yeah, that's a little, that's a little rough. That's a little rough. <laughs> like the like the Bryce Harper wow after the Grand Slam against the Cubs. Wow. <laughs> okay, Crocker. All right, so let's, <laughs> uh, that is the Austin Krell. Follow him on Twitter at Krell TPL. Check out the feed to Embiid on Twitter at the feed to Embiid. Awesome Sixers, awesome NBA coverage uh, with the man Brock Landis. And check out my man Tiago. He is T Scabia on Twitter for Austin for Tiago. For myself, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Russell Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me get him.